Right now, welcome to our Facebook Live special from this cafe. So, it looks like just a normal cafe here in El Menia in Upper Egypt, but there's something very special about this cafe. When you turn around and see, look where we are. So we are on the banks of the River Nile. You can see that it runs right next to this little cafe. It's almost sunset, it's a couple of hours before sunset and we've come down here um, just to do this special video today. It's a little bit windy so I apologise if you can't hear me very well. Um, but I just wanted to show you how amazing this place is and out of all the places in Egypt this is really my favourite place because look it's just and at the moment in Egypt it's like 38 degrees which is really really hot and the only place you can escape this heat is to come down by the river here and enjoy the weather, the breeze off the Nile. Now, there's some very special places around here which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. But I'll just say hello to everybody who's joining us today. Hi. <laughs> ice, ice baby. Kay and Mahmoud. Uh, Mahmoud's asking, where am, am I? I'm in uh, Menia, El Menia, in a small village called Bayahu. Um, and I'll just uh, show you the style. So it's, it's village style and you can see there's farmers over there and uh, there's a little tuk-tuk look flying through there. So if you've got any other questions please feel free to ask and I'll show you around over here. Um, hi Ian, thank you. I look good do I? With my uh, uncut beard and etc uh, etc. Et um, so Behind me, you can see, first of all, what's happening behind me is that there, there's no bridges in this area. So the local people, they, they make boats. I don't know if you can see over there. They make boats and then they charge people like five Egyptian pounds, which is 50p, to take their car from one side to the other. So there's, uh, the ferry will actually be coming over here in a minute. So if you stay with me here on... Uh, if you stay with me here on <laughs> Facebook Live, you will see the ferry it comes just over here in a moment, okay? Um, Ice is asking, where is Ibrahim? Now, Ibrahim, our friend, is from Luxor. We are north of Luxor, um, a few hours. Um, we're probably a couple of hours north from Cairo and a couple of hours south, maybe four hours to uh, Luxor. So, but we're still in Upper Egypt. Um, so behind me over there, you can see that there's actually a Christian monastery, believe it or not. So it was just a church many years ago where um, some, uh, I don't know whether it was Jesus or not, but somebody went into hiding there. I believe it was Jesus, apparently, from what Shafiq has been telling me. Um, and at the moment, they're having like a festival over there. Um, basically, it's just like a 15-day party, which is quite interesting. Um, but up there, basically, it used to be just a monastery, just a church, um, but now it's turned into a whole village, and actually loads of Christians live up there on top of the mountain. Um, we went up there yesterday, and we may do a video tonight from up there as well, because it's quite nice. Um, yes, so also up there as well, you can probably see there's lots of, like, white stone. So the light, it's like white mountains, and basically what they do there is they... Um, I don't know whether the word is quarry or not, but if you have a little look over here at the cafe, you can see uh, these white stones. And basically they make those white stones over at that quarry over there. So uh, that's the, uh, the local information I have for you today. Um, Darren has left a comment. We miss Charm very much as well. I've now gone to Jazz Aquamarine, wow! <laughs> so those of you, many of you here, including Kay, have been to Royal Albert Trust Moderna in Charm and they have the brand new hotel next door. So Darren's saying he's been there. It'll be interesting to see what you thought of it, Darren. It looked quite exciting when we were there. Um, I'll introduce you also to uh, my little friend here. So I'm staying with my friend Shafiq, who is a friend of um, basically when I first came to Egypt and my sister married an Egyptian same kind of, uh, it's a friend of him, so it's kind of my family here. So his uh, nephew is with me today, Amir. Yamir. Yeah, Amir. Amir doesn't speak English. Tell him English. Tell him English. Hi. Hi. 
<laughs> so that's Amir who uh, fell over the other day and <laughs> hit his head. Um, and basically Shafiq's house is just over the other side of the field there. Um, and you know Egyptians, they don't like to come into the sunshine and I'm going white so this is why today we've come down here to enjoy the sunshine um, and uh, get a little bit of tan. Now over here as well you can see a little fisherman. Can you see a little fisherman over here? We may see him uh, catching some fish a little bit later. And uh, this is uh, Ismaki. Basim. Basim. Into Kalim and Glutu. Ah? Shroy. Kalim Ahlan. Kalim Ahlan. Video. Video? Ah, Lee. And he's working uh, here at the cafe. Um, so, we're waiting now. Oh, hi, Helen. Welcome to the. Oh, I'm just reading all the comments now. Hi, Helen. Welcome. Darren's saying it was the one in Hagada. Okay. Sorry, I got confused there. But please tell us, how was it, Darren? I'm sure it was amazing. Um, I'm just looking when the ferry is coming. I think it's just loading up now. Um, have you got any other questions about Egypt, guys? So for those of you um, who didn't know what I was doing here, so basically I was in the north coast for a month, um, enjoying Alexandria and all those areas, and you probably saw there, the sea was so blue it was like unspoiled um, and kind of this is how the red sea used to be many years ago before the tourists used to come and then the locals used to dump their petrol and all sorts of stuff like that so um the only thing with the north coast it only works in the summer because it's quite cold and rainy in the outside the summer months and this is why um you would never get like European tourism there because it's not sustainable you know you can't just it's like Blackpool in England <laughs> isn't it you wouldn't build like an amazing hotel there because it would only work in the summer although saying that Blackpool does work maybe that's a bad example but you know what I mean you can't do like something amazing there for tourists because it would only work for the summer but the hotels that are there are you probably saw it's just Marassi is basically to give you an example of the price if you rent a flat in Marassi for one night it's four hundred and forty dollars for one night so when people say why there are no Europeans there it's because they can't afford to go there it's for like the upper class rich Arabs that are just so wealthy it's unbelievable um, and yeah it's just a uh, a dream for Arabs and us Europeans working there we're just playthings for the the rich and the famous of Arabia and um, actually it's just Egyptian there it's not even other Arabs so it's just like an exclusive place for the rich Egyptians to go and play in the summer hello Andrea hi to uh, everyone else joining us here today so yeah we're doing a Facebook live video from the banks of the Nile um, and at the moment I'm just about to show you the ferry that's coming across I'll just give you another little zip around as well you can see that the uh, the cafe is over here the boy that we spoke with earlier he's on his he's just stalled it <laughs> which is not so convenient hi hello hi hello um, I'm just showing you around. I'm just showing you this boy installing his motorbike. Also, you can see over here the farms. I'm not sure what they're doing on the farm, but there's some birds over there. Right. He's got his motorbike going now. I'll let him stabilise it and then I'll show you. Or oh, maybe... He, I don't think it's his motorbike. I think maybe he's stealing it. Um, have I done any work recently? No, I haven't. I am on a little bit of a holiday at the moment because um, because I can. It's just uh, <laughs> and Shafiq. So those of you who don't know Shafiq, I'll tell you a little bit about Shafiq. So Shafiq Faiz is in the back of my passport. So if anything happens in Egypt, they will call him. Um, and basically, when I first came to Egypt and I was at Intercontinental in Haggadah. He um, he was like my uh, big brother of Egypt, so uh, I've known him for many years, for 10 years now, um, and I trust him, and if I uh, 
need to come and stay with them anytime uh, I can. Right, Mohammed Yusuf Yusuri is asking, where am I? I'm in Menia, look, look, you can see where I am. I'm in Upper Egypt, in Menia. Um, Helen. <laughs> it's when he turns the camera. Oh, you want me to turn the camera? Okay, so have a look at the fields again. Or is that when it's, uh, you can't hear me? I don't know. I think if I put my hand there. So, um, I'm just saying it's a complete jolly. Oh, oh yes, uh, you're jealous. Don't be jealous, Andrea. It's a man's world, you know that. You wouldn't enjoy the, uh, the female side of it here. You'd have to cook. You'd have to clean while your men are down here at the, the local coffee shops enjoying the weather by the Nile. You'll be sweating away in the kitchen. <laughs> In fact, I really would hate to be an Egyptian woman because uh, it's really a tough life. Great for the man, but for the woman, uh, no way. Uh, Mustafa is saying you can swim. I do want to swim here, but Shafiq is not allowing me to uh, swim. He's saying it's too dangerous. Many people have died. There's an undercurrent and, and, and. But there is apparently a... Over the other side of the river, there is a um, like a, an easier place to swim. So me and Amir may go over there and try and uh, double. Even just put our feet in would be nice when it's uh, 37 degrees like today. Um, Andrea's saying, in my dreams. <laughs> but I still wouldn't like to do the, the female role of cooking and cleaning and washing and looking after the screaming children. It'll be hell. Um, cycling, Mustafa, it's too hot to cycle. I've been up at Egypt, 37 degrees in cycling. How come? Um, Helen and Andrea, yes, it would be quite interesting if you came over here and tried to be a British woman. The, uh, I think you get divorced in seconds. <laughs> the guys just wouldn't uh, put up for it. Um, are there crocodiles in there? Apparently there is crocodiles in there, although I haven't seen them. Um, when I've stayed in Upper Egypt in Luxor, um, Tarek has told me about um, the crocodiles like coming out and actually going over to uh, the houses in the middle of the night. But Shafiq seems to think that's lies, but I don't know whether it's true or not. So, um, you're not married. <laughs> I know what I'm saying is, if you tried to do the role of a woman here in Upper Egypt, then you wouldn't be allowed in the house unless you're married to them, that's first of all. Um, and then second of all, uh, yes, they are quite uh, dominant. <laughs> Part of me would really like to see Helen and Andrea try to be a, a Saidi woman in Upper Egypt, trying to look after their man. It'd be quite interesting to see. <coughs> Right, how am I, says Karam. I'm fine, thanks. Um, where are you? For those of you still asking where I am, I'm in Upper Egypt, I'm in Menia, which is between Luxor and Cairo. Uh, crocodiles in Aswan, yeah, I heard. Be before the Aswan Dam, apparently there's loads of cro crocodiles up there, so uh, that's quite cool. Somebody's written something in Arabic, maybe uh, Mustafa can translate what uh, our Arabic friend is saying. Um, Andrea, there will be reverse roles. No way! Look, a sidey guy, you cannot tame them whatsoever. If you think a sidey guy can wash his own underwear, you're mistaken. There's no way. He only got married for that reason. <laughs> he will not do any household chores. And even when they're in Haggadah, when they're working away, they obviously pay to use a laundrette. They won't do anything themselves. At the absolute most, in a life or death situation, maybe they'll cook for themselves. But that's probably it, to be honest with you. Oh, hi Mandy, welcome to our live video here in Egypt today. So, we've been waiting for it to come, and you can see it behind me, the ferry that travels people from that side to this side is on its way. And Andrea is saying the uh, Egyptian guys that would just stay dirty. Right, so I'm drinking, it's banned in Europe, these, uh, <laughs> it's really not good, but you know, it's so nice when it's cold in here in Egypt. It's basically apple Miranda, and I'm sure Helen and Andrea have both tried it. It's got uh, illegal, European illegal, even, this is why it's this colour. 
but really so good on a hot day. We've also got a couple of bought bottles of uh, water here. For those of you uh, just joining us now, Amir's here as well, uh, Shafiq's uh, nephew, and he's playing on my other iPhone. He's like so happy, so happy. So yeah, over here, look, there's some boys swimming. Check this out. Now I've never seen boys swimming here before, so I'm really happy to see this. I am so tempted to put the video on the side now and just jump in with them, look. For those of you worried about health and safety, they have not died. There's boys here swimming and, oh, there's some adults swimming as well over there. Can you see that guy? They are swimming over there. Now, something Shafiq did uh, tell me, which uh, you, you're gonna be really worried about, is that uh, hepatitis C is rife in Egypt because of the Nile. Um, so this is obviously one um, massive factor why you shouldn't maybe go in the water. However, I, I, I swam in this water before and I always believe if you have a strong immune system, you eat fruit and veg every day, then your immune system is going to be quite high and you're not going to be susceptible to hepatitis and all these uh, bad things that you can get from uh, water spawn um, things. Now the boys, I think they're coming out now because the, uh, the ferry's coming. So this is going to be the climax of our video. Look, you see the ferry is coming behind us. It holds about like six or eight cars and basically it just transfers over this side. Okay, I just need to read uh, the comments. You thought I was on a boat? No, I'm on a cafe, look. Look, I'm just on a cafe here on the side of the Nile. Get my kit off and jump in, <laughs> says Andrea. But not where I am. No, the only problem with swimming where I am is because look, there's kids here in the water and this ferry is coming. So if any British mothers were here right now, they'd be screaming, ah! But you know, these boys are strong. They know what's happening. And the guys now, the men are now shouting to tell them to go in. Just keep your mouth closed and don't swallow. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard not to swallow it, uh, Andrea. Right, so you can see here now, on the, on the uh, ferry is tuk-tuks, motorbikes, um, and also some of these big trucks which carry the, um, carry the, the bricks from the quarry over the other side. So uh, you can see the, like the drawbridge is down, and it's quite interesting to see what happens. So the drawbridge like, stops, and all, before it even stops on the side, the people just start to jump on and the motorbikes just freewheel off the side of the boat and everything. Um, and then when it's securely stopped, um, the, the big lorries do then start to move, so they're not all that, uh, that crazy. We went on the ferry yesterday and it's got a massive engine, it's really strong to go uh, in that uh, the River Nile. Obviously, it's the biggest night biggest river in the world so it certainly has some power um, look, can you see the, uh, the, uh, the cars and things that are driving on so this is the excitement of my days to watch the ferry go from there to here and watch the ferries going uh, watch the cars going on and on there was a guy the other day who tried to jump old guy he tried to jump because he was missing it and it was so funny he cut on his leg Sorry for it, but I did have to laugh at the same time. So you can see the tuk tuks coming off, and all the rest of the cars. Um, but what's amazing about this um, ferry is the fact it's so smooth. You wouldn't believe how smooth it was. I think it's because A, the weight of the ferry, and B, when all the cars are on there, it's really. Uh, really heavy so it just doesn't move and it just like slowly floats to the other side. Um, Mustafa is saying the River Nile is clean and where I am is the most clean. Yes, I hope so. The, uh, 
the only problem with the Nile, Helen says don't swallow, uh, the only problem with the Nile is I believe that obviously up in Aswan where it starts, or where it starts in Egypt, it's probably really clean and the more south you get, it gets dirtier and dirtier. For those of you who've been to Cairo, you've seen how filthy the water is in the River Nile in Cairo. So uh, you definitely wouldn't swim there. But I think you're right, Mustafa, if you look at the, I'll show you the water really close here. Can you see that? It's, uh, it doesn't obviously look like the Red Sea, but it certainly doesn't look like uh, putrid or any oil floating on top or anything like that. So uh, we may well be swimming in a moment when the ferry's gone. The only thing that worries me about getting is just the getting in and out. So uh, this is why we were looking to go over on the boat to the other side, because I believe it's like an easier exit. But I might watch the boys getting in and out in a minute and uh, see how they're getting, uh, whereabouts they're getting in and out. I think it's just on the bricks down here. So behind me now, the uh, ferry is loading back up again. So minibuses, the, uh, the empty trailers that have delivered their quarry rock is going back on. And uh, I'm sure some more uh, motorbikes. Oh look, there's a little queue of cars, in fact. Little queue today. The village is busy. <laughs> so we'll just keep that going in the background. If you've got any more questions about Egypt, um, for those of you who are following the people in uh, Sharm El Sheikh, there is a, uh, there's a waiter, I can't remember his name, but he posted a photo in behind the scenes in the kitchen the other day and it was really sad all the washing equipment all closed up all the tables from the restaurant in the kitchen and you know it was proper light closed down which was quite upsetting um, and then I can't remember who it was I think it might be Ahmed Ali the uh, doctor the nurse the from uh, from Albatross. He shared some photos of the new reception area, like real ones, not just the the made-up ones, but actually photos. So I'll try and find the photos and uh, share them. Amir, you okay? Amir's enjoying his uh, veranda. He will be uh, climbing the walls later because of <laughs> the E numbers. <laughs> But the good thing about the E numbers, because it's so hot, everybody in Egypt right now is sleeping, sleeping through the uh, day and up all night because it's the only time to have weather. So it's quite good to drink this because it will keep you up all night. Right. So what's happening behind us now? So the tuk-tuks are now uh, queuing. Because I think they're the last to go on. And, uh, oh wow, it's really full today. You can see the, they're all pushing each other, the, the, telling each other to uh, squeeze them on, squeeze them on today on the <laughs> ferry. But apparently it's quite a good business. This, this ferry runs like 24 hours, it doesn't stop. And uh, they've even got two ferries in case one breaks down. So it's a nice little business here for the people. Um, I think you have to drive, if you don't get this ferry, you have to drive like 20 miles round to, uh, to go all the way round to the other side. So uh, it is worth five Egyptian pounds, which is 50 pence to take your car on this ferry from one side to the other. Okay, so this is the driver pipping now. The driver of the boat, so he's trying to say that he'll be going. You can see uh, they're going to squeeze two more lorries on there. Oh, Phoebe's joined us, and Ailey, my mom. Hi, <laughs> welcome to our live video here in Almenia. You can see where we are down by the riverbanks of the Nile. It's a little bit windy down here, so my apologies. However, I can't apologise because the wind is so nice because it's still 37 degrees right now, right here in Egypt. I'll just show you the sunshine. <coughs> so, the, uh, the ferry is now full. 
and you can see the oh let me just show you here so then i'm gonna lift the drawbridge a little bit oh yeah andrea well spotted there is a tiny little rescue boat which can hold about six to eight people even though there's probably about 30 on the ferry <laughs> it's going to be basically like the titanic if that thing goes and apparently uh, the drawbridge has gone up before show you the drawbridge the drawbridge has gone up before and cars have like gone straight to the Nile which I've been said and people have died so right so the engines now going they've lifted up the um, they've lifted up the uh, drawbridge and off it goes so they don't do it all the way across they just do it a little bit and you can see uh, you know it's very relaxed it's very like chilled out there which is nice Ima. <laughs> yes, Ima, I have a lot of hot air, you're right. Hi Jono, welcome to our live video. We're just going to watch the, uh, the ferry going now, look. So it's gone, there's one farmer boy there that is going to try and jump somewhere. Oh no, he's just uh, throwing at his friends, that's all. He's now st throwing stones at his friends. Yes, so uh, so that was it. That was the excitement of our video. The excitement of my days here in Upper Egypt is just to sit here, have a drink by the River Nile and watch the ferry go back and forth um, and uh, enjoy the scenery. I'll just show you down there. You can see the, the, the mountains actually get bigger. For those of you who weren't at the start of the video, there's actually...